Hello, my dear ones. I'm going to jump straight into this one because I don't quite know how to introduce this topic. The only way forward which is safe for our salvation is to follow Christ. Hear that word, to follow. It's in our calling. It's, it's part of our DNA as Christians to be followers. And there is something in nowadays contemporary society, in our times, that makes many of us think that somehow to follow Christ is in fact to follow our own feelings, to follow our own desires and our own instincts. And there is value in our feelings and desires and instincts as long as Christ blesses them and as long as the Holy Spirit speaks through them. But how do you discern when it is the Holy Spirit working through you, speaking through your emotions and your instincts and so on, and when is it the spirit of the evil one? The very blunt, painful reality is that there is no way we can know that. We can only get to know that much later on in our spiritual life, towards the end of our spiritual life. Because if you look at what the fathers are telling us, discernment, discernment is the height, the crown of all virtues. Don't forget, my beloved ones, that our experience of spiritual life is maybe a year or two, or maybe a decade or two. Whereas the experience of the devil goes all the way back to the first man to ever be created. The devil managed to push Adam into sin, and he has learned how humanity reacts to his temptations, to his triggers. He knows when to attack. He knows when to withdraw. He knows when to play dead, when to play defeated, so that it feeds in us pride and self-reliance. Don't forget that you are entering a battle when you begin to follow Christ. And in that battle, you have a choice to either learn how to fight by yourself as you go into the battle, or you have to listen to the generals who have lived decades, centuries, millennia before you, before us, and who have gained experience and have passed on that experience. You are not struggling against another human being. You are struggling against the spirits of hell, and they have millennia of experience about how to catch us, how to push us, how to trigger our, our negative things, our negative behaviors, our sins in us. I remember when I went into a monastery and all of a sudden I no longer had to rely on my feelings or my brain or my instincts because I had this community around me that was guiding me and I had this freedom of no longer being dependent upon what I felt and how I felt. I had them to teach me how to react, how to respond to the temptations that were coming my way. And this was not some sort of a random gathering of people. This is a gathering that is brought together within the same church, within the same tradition, shaped themselves by the same experience of... 2,000 years of Christian battle against the devil. And that gave me freedom. It lifted me up from this network of, of my own emotions and my own logical thinking. I mean, think, think about your own life. Think how passionately you have loved people in your life with such passion that you could have died for them. And now think where is that relationship? Has it survived? Are those people whom you loved in your teen years or your twenties, are those people for whom you, you risked everything, are they still in your, in your life, in your heart? Do they have still the same value? 
I know from my own experience and from the experience of the people I know from confession how, I think the word is fickle, is that a word? How, how transient and how unserious all our feelings can be and also all our um, logical judgments and thinking. I know that there were things I could have died for in terms of what I thought, uh, values of this world. And then my mind changed. And ten years later, ten years down the line, I no longer agree with my own mind ten years ago. And the emotions I have now no longer agree with how I was feeling about certain things or certain people twenty, thirty years ago. I do not want... It's, it's an active choice. I do not want you or myself or anyone else to found our salvation on these transient waves of emotions and feelings and thoughts that come and go and stay with us for a while and then they leave us. Because this is not the way forward. In the battle against the devil, and Christ tells us very plainly that we do not do battle with human beings. We do battle with the devil. We lack his experience. He has millennia old of acquired experience about how to defeat us. We have a few years or a few decades. The only way, the only way that we can be equal in this knowledge about the spiritual war is for us to join the ranks of all of those who have done battle with the evil one in the past. This is why we rely on the tradition of the Church. This is why we allow the prayers of the saints to shape the way in which we ultimately end up praying with our own words. This is why we pray for our minds to become the mind of the fathers. Because otherwise, we are an ant, a little insect, struggling to defeat a lion. Don't allow pride to keep you away from the safety of the treasure of the tradition of the church. Don't allow the voices of the world that preach to us to be self-reliant and to follow your own feeling and your own instinct. Don't allow those voices which are just masks for the voices of the devil to bring you down. The only way forward is to approach Christ in humility and to follow his friends. It's not by accident that he calls them his friends. It's not by accident that he sends them forward to teach the world about how to follow him. It's not by accident that he tells them those who honor me and follow me will honor and follow you. It's not by accident that he tells them that those who do not listen to you don't even bother, just move forward. Pray for them, keep them in your prayers, but move forward. There is an act of being taught how to follow Christ. And that teaching comes from millennia of experience. It's not something that you just make up as you go. That's as dumb spiritually as entering a battle, as going into Ukraine now, or going into wherever there's a major war, like the invasion of Gaza, and trying to do battle there without you ever having held a gun in your life. You will certainly die. What's even more perverse is that in the spiritual battle you can be dead and not even realize it. Because the devil needs dead people who are successful in their spiritual lives. The devil needs them in the world because then they become distractions for others. They become bad examples for others. And others will follow them instead of following the church, instead of following the fathers, those who have lifted up their crosses and moved forward with patience and with humility, being true followers of the one who taught us to be humble, 
like he is humble and to follow him the way he follows the Father. Without the safety, without the shield of the tradition of the church, we shall be defeated sooner or later. It doesn't matter how alive you may feel in your spiritual life because our feelings are made of nothing. We are made of nothing. Our feelings are just the results of, you know, the soups of hormones that feed our brains. They come, they go, they change like seasons. They change like the waves of the ocean that I see outside. There's no rock, no stability, no truth in them. That stability and that truth only belongs to the experience of the church. So if you want to fight the right way, if you want to be safe in your battle against the enemy, against our spiritual enemy, abandon your own tiny, decade-long experience and join the ranks of those who are following, those who came before them, who are following those who came before them, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the holy apostles, all the way down to the mouth and to the truth that came out of the mouth of Christ himself. I pray, I genuinely pray that I myself and all of us get to experience one day that release, that freedom of no longer having to follow these fleeting feelings and thoughts of ours and that we find the safety and the rock, the truth of Christ himself which is hidden in plain sight in the Orthodox Church. Be blessed, my beloved one. Be blessed. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Amen.